Welcome to this episode of Selling Florida with the Robert Slack team. Here we are in beautiful, sunny Miami. Kat, what do you have set up for us today? I don't even know where to begin. I'm gonna actually go meet up with Letty, our team leader. We're going to compare the difference between single family houses in Miami versus the condo living. Well, I've got a lot of things to see. I cannot wait. And by the way, I've got a little surprise for you a little bit later. I don't know to be scared or excited. Well, I'm not gonna tell you. Let's get this party started. The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got Welcome to Selling Florida with the Robert Flack team. Florida is a very good real estate market. What a place to live. You can do everything. We want you to come with us. Florida dream, right? I got it. You literally have everything. It's not about the home. It's about the lifestyle. Oh, You've got so much going on just right here, right? What a place to party. Let's get started right now. Thank you for having us in Miami. Of course, welcome to Miami. Day team with Robert Slack. Lots of exciting things happening. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with the Dade team. Uh, we just closed out our 2021 year. We did uh, 120 million. So very, very proud for that. That's amazing. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. I think we we pretty much doubled what we did last the year before. So very excited for for the team. So this is one of our beautiful Robert Slack listings. This is one of our Robert Slack listings. Uh, Patricia is one of our top agents and she's waiting inside to show us around. I can't wait to see it. Awesome, let's go check it out. I just love the feel of this home altogether. The greenery, the breeze, it's a beautiful day. Tell me a little bit more. So yeah, this, uh, this is a very special property uh, in the area. It's very close to Miami Shores, El Portal, uh, Biscayne Park, yeah. minutes away from South Beach, uh, Wynwood area, Bay Harbor, uh, North Miami, North Beach. So the location is a prime location. The location is incredible, but, but also the finishes are really beautiful. Yes, this property, everything, as you can see, everything is quality. These are tile floors, uh, the kitchen, they have a South California closet, and uh, yeah, as you can see, everything is quality. Their attention to detail really is impeccable. So what kind of traffic have you seen coming through there? Is this a popular area? Have you had a lot of buyer inquiries? Yes, the first time that when I put the listing on the MLS, I have like uh, the same day, like 10 showings requests. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, uh, and we had an open house, but before we had so many offers. Wow. And yes. So what I love about this property is it's so close to all the different amenities in the area. Yes, and you also are like just minutes, uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, from the airport. That is very important. And the cruise port too. Oh, yes. I can't wait to see the rest of the house. And here is the master bedroom. As you can see, all this beautiful space. This is a great space and what a Miami vibe. I love the colors, I love the decor. And you gotta see something very important, look at this. The blind treatment. Oh, You can so see Miami. the details so in the blind treatment, yeah. And let me tell you something about this bathroom. This bathroom is very special because they put this tile, Spanish tiles floor. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. Yes, it's kind of like in a spa. It's so bright. Yes, so bright, and they, this, uh, these closets are California closet. Wow, the whole Miami thing has really captured me. I feel like I'm on vacation. Yeah, that, that was the idea when they built this house. I'd say they nailed it. Yeah. Wow, Patricia, this is so gorgeous. Lots of room back here. Yes, actually you have room for a pool, a deck, even like build a barbecue area and you can just like sit and relax. Well, I definitely can picture a pool back here, maybe having a cocktail, an afternoon barbecue after coming home from a long day at the beach. 
I know you've got another property lined up for us. It's a condo, right? That's right. We're going to visit North Bay Village in a few. We're going to go visit Darrow. Awesome. Well, me personally, this is what it's all about for me. The single family, proximity to the beach and nightlife. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. My pleasure. And welcome to Miami. Thank Enjoy. You. So this is Eloquence on the Bay. I love the name of the building, first of all. Yes. And I think, you know, we just came from one of the other Robert Slack listings, which was in the area, but it was a single family home. I'm more of a single family person. Nice. But this condo might actually change my mind. So yeah, this condo is beautiful. It's a very nice open floor plan, 1,500 square feet. And living here, you still have the whole lifestyle of Miami. So tell me, I'm learning a lot about the Miami lifestyle. What, what some things that you like to do? I mean, the biggest thing obviously is boating, but there's so much with food, culture. I like to dance, so there's just so much to do here in Miami. Yeah, I understand you're not just a realtor with Robert Slack, but you also teach lessons. I do, yes. Uh, dance, uh, salsa dancing. So you love to dance. I'm learning that's definitely part of the whole Miami vibe and scene. Absolutely. I love to dance. You know, going out here in Miami, there's so much to do as far as dancing goes. Really nice clubs to go to. Yeah, Kat, so the amazing thing is dance is a lot like real estate. You know, there's so much movement going on. It's got its ups and downs, a lot of hurdles to go through. But in the end, when you learn to dance, it all comes together. And same thing with real estate. You just end up finding that amazing place, that amazing lifestyle. I love that. Maybe that's where I went wrong. I should have learned to dance before getting into real estate. There you go, yes. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about Eloquence on the Bay and just condo life in general in North Bay Village. So the biggest thing about the kind of life here in North Bay Village is there's a lot to do. You're close by to everything. It's very conveniently located. And here you're on a very nice, private, quiet island. You're in between downtown Miami and Miami Beach, and you don't have to deal with all the crazy traffic. So that's the little hidden gem of North Bay Village. So we have a lot of buyers that we work with at Robert Slack, and many people are probably wondering, should I choose a single family home or a condo? What would you recommend? You know, I get this a lot too, and it really just depends on the person and their lifestyle. So many times Sometimes I'll start off showing someone a single family house and then once they see condos, I show them a condo and they're like, wow, I could have a pool, a gym, tennis court, you know, all these things start to pop in and they realize that a condo might actually be the way to go and then vice versa. All those great amenities you mentioned, the pool, the gym, but none of the upkeep, that's got to be a positive for the condo lifestyle. Yes, absolutely. That gives you the chance to go out and if you decide to go on vacation, you don't have to worry about, you know, getting the place hurricane proof and all the little obstacles that come with that. I'm really starting to rethink my vote earlier about residential lifestyle being for me. Condo living has lots of perks. You're starting to make me change my mind. And if you really want to be sold, check this out. Okay, Daryl, I'm totally sold. This view is a game changer for me. Can I maybe do the best of both worlds, have a house in the city and a condo here? Absolutely. I mean, here, it's great. You got beautiful downtown Miami. You have this beautiful bay view, so much greenery. I mean, what more could you ask for? I can't think of one thing, really. This is incredible. Yeah, and at nighttime, the views are spectacular. So I'd imagine you're really busy having listings like this. What type of buyers do you see coming through? Uh, a little bit of everyone. There's some locals that come through and a good amount of people from up north. Also some people from other states, so yeah. Well, I can see why. I know Florida is the place to be. Absolutely. Well, speaking of places to be. Hey, Dan. Hey, Kat, hurry up. We're getting ready to get on the boat. We're going to go meet Dan and the team and get on a boat. This is the part of Miami you're going to love the most, Kat. The Robert Slack team is lucky to have Florida funding behind them and all things financing. And I understand there's a bit of a difference between financing a single family home versus a condo. Yeah, well, single family home, we're typically just qualifying the buyer, but when we're Financing condos, we're not just qualifying the buyer, we're qualifying that condo to make sure the condo passes certain 
guidelines that Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, conventional lenders have placed on it. And has there been any new change in guidelines ever since the Surfside collapse? There has. So in the end of part of last year, Fannie came out with some new guidelines, Fannie Mae. So they're going to ask about any significant deferred maintenance and see if there is any. And if there is, that's problematic. So significant deferred maintenance would be something that affects the structure, the habitability, the safety of a given building. They're also going to ask, are there any current special assessments? And then they're going to look into those special assessments and see what they're for. And again, if anything has anything to do with safety, structural integrity, habitability, those things are going to create problems. And unfortunately, that condo may not be financeable until all those items have been remedied and fixed. And so what about down payment? So there's different sort of guidelines that affect condos. Under a full review process, they can go with as little as 3% down if they're a first time home buyer, 5% down if they're not a first time home buyer. However, if that condo does not pass certain guidelines, such as they carry enough reserves in their budget to fund any potential issues, then we're gonna have to lower their loan to value. Florida is the only state in the country that has the most restrictive condo guidelines. And then in those situations, someone might have to put down 25% on a primary residence to get that condominium loan. And speaking of primary residences, we also have a large number of people coming in buying second homes. So what about for an investment in a condo? So a second home or investment property loan will have similar restrictions a buyer in Florida might have to put 30% down if that condo does not hold what are considered proper reserves in their budget. However, if they do hold those reserves in their budget, then they can go under the normal guidelines. Investment properties, 15% down minimum. Second home, 10% down minimum. Gary, as always, your insight into the market is incredible. And at Robert Slack, we are so lucky to have Florida funding as our resource. I appreciate the opportunity. All right, so how was the listing? Oh, it was amazing. It was so beautiful. The views were incredible. I really am confused now on what I want. Between a house and a condo? I, I really can't decide. Well, you know what I was doing all morning? I told you we were going to have some fun today. So I've got some of the team here. We're going to jump on the boat. And we're going to go around and see the beautiful condos from the bay. Awesome. Twist my arm. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ready to party? All right. Let's go see. Let's have some fun. The name of the company is Dewetta Debetta. Where in the heck did that come from? So my dad owned a trucking company in New York. The name of the company was Debetta and Sons Trucking, and our slogan was the Sooner Debetta. So everybody knew us as the Sooner Debetta. So your last name is Debetta. It is. My last name's Debetta. So this was an homage to my old man when I moved to Miami. I said nothing fits a boat better than Dewetta Debetta, and here we are. I love it. I love it. I didn't know the connection, so I was trying to figure that piece out. Oh yeah. So you've been here. You moved back to New York. You came back, you bought a, the condo and the boat came with it? No, the, well, the boat slip came with the condo, which was, I was very fortunate with that. But uh, yeah, I lived on Miami Beach from 2013 to 2018. And then I had to relocate back to New York to open an office for a couple of years. COVID hit, I was able to relocate back to Miami and that's where I met Daryl bought the condo and then uh, the weekend I closed on the condo I was buying the boat the next weekend. As you should be. Absolutely. I couldn't <laughs> let that slip go to waste. So tell me then, tell me a little bit about uh, the company. Yeah, we're a uh, brand new 2021 Aquila Catamaran. We're basically offering bespoke bay tours throughout Biscayne Bay 
sandbar excursions, champagne at sunset, kind of targeting that luxury clientele who want to come out, have a good time professionally or personally on the water. We're able to offer overnights to Bimini as well. Each of our guests is able to tailor make their entire excursion. So anything that anybody would want, all they have to do is ask and we'd be happy to accommodate. So I can only assume that uh, if you don't have somebody on the boat, you're on the boat yourself and maybe you're fishing or stopping at little restaurants like this along the way. You know, it's my guilty pleasure when we're not taking guests out. I do get to utilize the boat myself sometimes and that's part of the benefit of having it downstairs at your condo and, and living here on the bay in Miami. I mean, I'm able to turn it on after sunset and bring it back right after dark. So I couldn't have asked for a better setup. I mean, unless you're buying a single family home here with a tremendous amount of dock space, the condo amenities that we had at this particular location is just fantastic. All right, Nick, so where are you taking us today? So I think I'm dropping you guys off south of Fit. Okay. When you come to Miami, there's a few things you need to experience. One is the cuisine. We've got some of the most phenomenal cuisine out there. The culture here is very unique especially with the Latin influence we have. So I think you might have a little dancing in store this afternoon as well. And then, yeah, we're gonna take you down to the beach area so you can take a look at a few more places in the area. Appreciate you dropping us off down there, taking care of us. And you know, we want people, if they're ever coming down this way, call this man right here. Absolutely, do what it better. <laughs>not a better way to see Miami than on a boat. Nick just dropped us off here south of 5th. We're at South Point Park. This is absolutely a gorgeous place. You can see the skyline of Miami from here. There's so much to do around here. South Beach is right at our fingertips. Just beyond that is the design district. There's so much culture to take in. Speaking of culture, we're going to head down to Little Havana. It's going to be awesome down there. There's so much going on. There's people everywhere. There's live music. There's culture. And we're going to meet back up with our team down there. Maybe do a little dancing? I am not a dancer. That's not going to happen. But never say never. We'll see. better way to see downtown Miami from the boat south of 5th on the park and now here we are in Little Havana. We're actually going to meet up with our culinary host Robin who told me to meet her in front of the Cuban rooster. Well you know what I think I see a rooster up here that might be Robin right there. It's got to be. First things first, we got to start a Cuban day by having Cuban coffee and an empanada. Are you hungry? Let's do it. Let's Very do it. Hungry. <laughs> Let's go. A morning in Little Havana always starts with our empanada and our Cuban coffee. You're standing right now at something called the Ventanita, which is a little window. This is where all of our residents come to gossip in the morning <laughs> over some food and some drink. Ready to gossip? Ready. Let's gossip. Ready to gossip. We always okay. have something to say. Wow. So what you have here is our delicious picadillo empanada. Take a bite and tell me what you think. Delicious, huh? This is made with ground beef, spices, and our sofrito. Sofrito is the most important thing to the Cuban culture. That is onions, garlic, and peppers. All simmered together to make a beautiful empanada. Hey, Robert, what's the sauce? The sauce is a little hot sauce. If you want to add it to the picadillo, you can add it. But Cuban cuisine is not spicy. That is about as spicy as we get. And if you don't take it, you're no less Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> but really the treat at coming to a ventanita is to have something called a colada. A colada is simply Cuban coffee that you share. 
everything here in Little Havana we share. We share the husbands, we share the wives, <laughs> we share everything, okay? So, what we do is pour it out in a little cup, and the colada, you do not want to drink any more than that. If you drank this whole thing, you know where you'd be for the next five days? Awake. Up on the ceiling. <laughs> okay, so you want to just make sure you have one of these. Let's do a little toast. Hey. And it's very hot. Very so warm. as we say in Spanish, guys, salud. 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 Thank you. Delicious, huh? Wow. What's your first impression? Very, it's very good. It's sweet. Right? sweet. I don't exactly. Know. Don't sweet. Cuban culture, everything is about the sugar. No sugar, no Cuba. So it's embedded in our culture. We use sugar in everything. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and our beloved coffee. And mojitos. I can't forget about the mojitos. <laughs> What's extraordinary about this neighborhood is that unlike a lot of American cities, that when immigrants come, they adopt themselves to American lifestyle. Here, starting around the revolution in Cuba, 1959, when the Cubans came, yes, they wanted to absolutely be part of American society, but they brought the Latin flavor, which changed Miami forever. Robin, what a great history lesson that was, but I hear there's some great cigars here. That's what's up next. It is our finest art form. Are you ready to do a smoke? Let's see it. Let's do it. that has been in Cuba for so many years. You don't really see hand rolled anymore, but today you're in for a treat with my dearest friend, Roberto. Mi amor. <laughs> now, there are three things that make a great cigar. First is the experience of the roller. Just like any other industry, the more experience you have, the better you are. This one has 30 plus years of experience. Second thing is, is when you roll up a cigar, you wanna make sure that you use a whole leaf. And then the third thing, we age our cigars. So the cigars that you're seeing here will eventually go into something called a humidor, where we age it like a fine wine or cheese. For about a month, you walk in and then you buy a delicious cigar. So what he's doing right now is the first stage of rolling. Tobacco leaves are the seven different layers to a tobacco plant. Each leaf has a different function. The inner leaves, that's the actual tobacco that you're smoking, is rolled up in a finer leaf here. You can feel it. Feels like tissue paper, right? Eh? Totally. Once it's rolled up, you're gonna see him cut off those scraps. Then we put it into a mold. This mold will go under that press. It will sit there for about an hour. They come out. He will finish them to look beautiful. Those beautiful cigars go into the humidor. Six weeks later, you walk in and you got yourself a Cuban cigar. Beautiful. I did not know it took six weeks. It takes a long time. And what's time. very interesting, from the very beginning of the process to the end of the process, about 100 hands have touched that cigar. Made with a lot of love. Made with a lot of Cuban love. <laughs> So now we are at one of the most famous landmarks of all in the neighborhood. It's the emotional glue that holds the whole neighbor together. It's my favorite spot. This is called Domino Park, where we play the national game of Cuba all day long, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. At 5.59 and 45 seconds, they're still playing. We can't get them out of here. So you can see the game is very animated. They have a ball all day long, playing the game that they have learned since childhood. Thanks, 
guys for coming on our tour today. I hope you've enjoyed Little Havana, the sights and the sounds of our Cuban culture. It was my dear pleasure to really introduce to you our beloved community. But right now, I've got the cap on the day, and that is to have our delicious, cool, minty mojito at our most famous place called Ball and Chain. It is a wonderful establishment that you're gonna have a lot of fun in. And just to let you know, our company has many tours. Little Havana is one of our favorites. We have tours for the public. We have private tours. We welcome everybody from around the world to our little enclave of Miami. Robin, what an absolutely wonderful tour. You can spend all day here on 8th Street. Pick a spot, just go in, listen to the live music. Thank you so much. My pleasure. What a day it's been here in Miami. Calle Ocho did not disappoint. We're going to go inside, have that celebratory mojito with our team. Robin, it's been a great day in Miami, seeing the sights and sounds from the water here on 8th Street. Absolutely amazing. Another great episode of Filling Florida with the Robert Black team. Taking views of the ocean, intercoastal, and Miami Beach skyline from the 17th floor residence in the MEI condo building. Beautifully appointed two bedroom, two bath unit, which offers a spacious layout, open concept kitchen with top of the line appliances, totally upgraded bathrooms, and custom closets. All of Miami's hotspots are within a 10 to 15 minute drive from South Beach to Wynwood and Bell Harbor. The immediate neighborhood offers all the best restaurants, shopping, and entertainment. The MEI building is known for its incredible amenities, including a gorgeous infinity pool, well-equipped fitness center, yoga studio, spa, library, and tea lounge. Owner perks also come with valet parking and beach access. Beautiful, spacious, 1,005 square foot, direct ocean views, one bedroom, one and a half bath in Sunny Isles Beach, across from the beach. Great location, light and bright, facing east, fully furnished, with stainless steel appliances in the kitchen. Contemporary, chic, pet-friendly building with gorgeous resort-style amenities, pool, gym, tennis, spa, cabanas, mini mart, coffee shop, 24 hour front desk and valet. Beach is a minute walk away, walking distance to a variety of international cuisine restaurants, boutique shops and parks. 24 hour notice to show close to all major roads, airports, world-class shopping at Aventura Mall and shops at Bell Harbor.